Hello everyone, Jared from One Tribe here, and I wanted to talk to you about a new project that I've been working on, um, the triplet plugs. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with who I am and what I do, I'm a lapidary and ceramic artist based in Richmond, Virginia. I primarily specialize in jewelry for folks with traditional enlarged body piercings, so that's what we'll be talking about here today. Um, so this new project, it's a multi-material plug project. Um, before I go any further, I'm just going to move a light here on my desk and we'll watch very closely to see what happens. Did you guys catch that? So those plugs are lighting up, but a bunch of other stuff on the table is lighting up too, and that gives us some indications of what's happening with the plugs themselves. Um, the raw materials in the background are quartz, lapis, and labradorite. And those are the three materials that these plugs are made from. Um, they are a process, a lapidary process, called a triplet. There's also uh, one called a doublet. Essentially, these are uh, projects where multiple stones are bonded together to create something new. They were originally invented to make very valuable, very fragile materials, like this gem amylite, wearable or usable in jewelry. So this is a tenths of a millimeter thick slice of amylite that's backed with a stone and capped with quartz. And that allows it to be set into jewelry uh, without just falling apart. Uh, so traditionally, this process was primarily used to make fragile things uh, more usable. And I've been experimenting a lot with how to use that same process to create uh, new gemstones that have entirely different, different aesthetics than what they would have um, individually. So this pair of plugs down here, I'm going to rotate these. And you can see that they just lit up. I think that's pretty fun. The reason that's happening is that we have three materials. We have a hyper clear quartz, uh, something that uh, will slightly magnify, lets in a ton of light, and also does a little bit of um, light play fun in there. And then we have a layer of labradorite. That's the stone right here. Uh, the color is not in the stone, it's a light trick. And so what we're seeing is reflection and refraction, um, stripping away part of the visible spectrum and reflecting back uh, fun colors based on the thickness of the layers in the stone. Um, a lot of people think that it has to be quite thick in order to flash, but that's not the case. This piece is about 0.8 millimeters, so very, very thin. Um, and it will flash. Let me see. There we go. Get that in focus here. Ah. There we go. So you can see the color right there. Yeah, this is completely translucent. If I actually move this light over here, I can show you. Um, you can really see right through this stone. The other project that's going on here, the other material rather, is lapis. Um, bluestone, generally opaque. There's something unique about it. If you can overcome its fragility and carve it really, really thin, and that's that it gets translucent as well. This slice is also uh, 0 0.8. It's about 0.74 millimeters thick. Um, and it's starting to light up right there with a really beautiful cobalt blue. So for these three materials together, when carved properly, form the basis for this triplet plug project, excuse me, um, that has a ton of light play and really sort of accentuates the effect of all of the materials. So there we've got the super dark, vibrant blue of the lapis. And here we've got the lighter blue, really intense flash from the labradorite. And then if we turn it, you see that you start to get some really interesting uh, color transmission from back to front. But the quartz in the middle is clear. Um, oh, by the way, the backs are blue. That's lapis back there. Um, so we're taking three materials and turn them, turning them into something that's very dynamic when it's worn. Um, really beautiful, very interesting. Um, something that's really visually striking.
So how does this work? Well, um, both of these materials need to be cut incredibly thin. Um, I can't zoom very much with this lens, but you're looking at a little less than a millimeter each. Uh, layers on the back there. So there's a lapis and then you can just barely see the labradorite here is the gray that's shining. Um, and then the quartz. Um, the process involves a lot of cutting and polishing and then cutting and polishing and gluing and cutting and polishing um, to get everything to the thickness it needs to be for this to work. Um, is it safe to wear? Absolutely. It does have adhesive in the project, there's no way around that. Um, but there's a bevel here on the back and both of the secondary stones as well as their glue lines are offset off the back of the piece. You can actually see the flare tip shining right here and there's nothing else that's going to touch the skin beyond that. Um, so they're fine. I would have no issues recommending these for anybody. Um, one last thing about this set that's pretty unique that's not really been done to my knowledge. This customer has some issues with jewelry falling out. So I've done a matte finish on the wearing surface. Uh, this should hopefully make those a little grabbier. You can see it just barely, the satin here versus the very, very high polish of the quartz on the face. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I'll report back after I hear back from him. Um, speaking of that customer, I'd like to thank him uh, for always coming at me with support for some of the crazier ideas I have that take a long time. He's had a lot of projects where I'm learning a bunch in the process and it's every maker's dream to have customers who believe in that process and appreciate it. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about these materials or this process, feel free to get in touch with me. Um, if you enjoy this project, if you enjoy this video, then please absolutely let me know. Thank you. Have a good one.